Today, we're taking a look at LaserPecker's new portable and powerful LP5 laser machine. It's an interesting dual laser engraver that combines a 20 watt blue diode laser and a 20 watt 1064 fiber laser all in one device. This combination allows you to work with a large variety of materials like wood, leather, stone, plastics, and most metals. The LP5 bundle arrives well packaged and inside the box you'll find the user manual that has an overview of the components and instructions on how to operate the machine. We have a sample pack of materials to run a few tests including a slate coaster, a piece of stainless steel, a few blank brass coins, wooden keyring blanks, black coated aluminium sheets, a piece of leather and some wood. For the machine there's the solid one piece metal base and this attaches to the motorised upright. At the top we find two buttons to raise and lower the laser for focusing. There's a plastic protective cover with a removable front screen and built-in extraction fan at the rear. This attaches onto the LP5 laser module which feels solid and well built. There's everything needed to get started including an accessory box with tools, assembly hardware, two security keys, a USB drive and a lens cleaning cloth. We have a pair of safety goggles that covers both the diode and fibre laser's wavelength, the power supply and the power cable, and the USB cables for the connections. And finally there's also a couple of accessories like the cutting plate for the base and the exhaust tube and adapter. Assembling the LP5 is a relative straightforward process thanks to clear step-by-step -step instructions. It simply involves attaching the base plate to the motorised upright with four screws then attaching the laser unit and tightening the underside knob. There's a lens protective cover to remove and then the protective shield is installed. This shield is held on with two internal thumb screws that are found on the underside. The front protective screen snaps into place and this is held on with magnets. At the back there are a few cables to connect, one for the exhaust fan, one for the motorised upright and one for the power supply. Once the assembly is finished we can put on the included safety glasses and it's ready for the first project. So let's take a look around the machine and review some of the key specs. The first thing you'll notice is the build quality. It features a solid metal construction and everything looks and feels well made. The LP5 is equipped with a dual laser system that combines two lasers inside with a 20 watt 450 nanometer blue diode laser that's good for engraving woods, acrylic, glass, leather, stone, paper and rubber and it's also capable of cutting basswood up to 20 millimeters. There's also the 20 watt 1064 fiber laser that's good for engraving metals like stainless steel, aluminium, brass, silver, titanium and plastics. At the top we find the handle and three physical buttons. The red one in the middle is an emergency stop and the other two are used for pausing or resuming and framing a job. The pause button is also used to place the machine in standby mode by holding it down for a few seconds. Towards the front we have a handy LED light bar that indicates the machine's operating mode. At the sides we have a magnetic dust cover that can be removed if we ever need to access or clean the filter or fans. Towards the back we find all the connection ports with three USB-A for 5 volt output and a USB-A for the flash drive. There's a USB-C for PC connection and there's a port for the power cable. Another good thing we have is a port for a security key which allows us to lock out the machine from unauthorized use when removed. Underneath there's two red lasers used for the focusing and we have a protective cap covering the lens and towards the back of the unit is the mounting point. We can adjust the height of the laser by raising or lowering it using the up and down buttons on the electric stand or this can be adjusted in the design space software. The height adjustment is used to focus the laser on the material and when the two red dots combine into one it's in focus. For connection the LP5 can be operated using a mobile device either a phone or tablet or from a desktop computer. A mobile device connects via Wi-Fi while a PC can connect via Wi-Fi or connect directly with a USB cable. The LP5 has an engraving area of 120 by 160 millimeters which is a good size for small engraving projects. The LP5 is also able to be used at multiple angles and even with the optional safety enclosure that has a built-in camera. It's a highly modular and expandable device that should be able to cover most small DIY engraving projects. If you do want to work on something slightly larger, 
The optional slide extension accessory expands the workspace to 160 by 300 millimeters. And there's an optional rotary extension that's used for engraving onto round objects like this aluminium bottle. For the setup, I'm also using the air purifier alongside the laser that helps to remove smells, smoke and fumes when engraving on materials. Another thing I did add to the setup is a simple and cheap webcam. This allows the laser to be monitored from a screen, which means we're not directly looking at the laser while it's in use. This adds another layer of protection to the user, but even with this, always wear the safety goggles when the machine is on. For the first test, we're engraving one of the included test files from the USB drive onto a wooden keyring. With the machine connected to a PC, over in the design space, we can select the USB icon from the side menu. Then select the keyring test that's found on the USB drive. We can't modify or adjust the settings for these pre-made test files in the software, but we can click on preview, and this will give us the outline preview on the machine. So next, the wooden keyring is set up on the machine within the outline, and the laser's focus is adjusted. With everything set, we can start the job. It took about two minutes to complete, and the finished result looks good. There was a bit of residue left on the surface, but once wiped off with a cloth, it looked nice and clean. Back in the software, the LaserPecker design space is easy to use with a basic user-friendly layout. On the left, we can use the tools to draw, import an image, add text, create QR codes or barcodes, create shapes and insert clip art. So with a picture added, we can adjust the effect, trace an image to give us an outline, and this can be filled for an engraving, and an offset can be added to cut out the design. There's plenty of basic tools that allows you to prepare files for engraving. With the file prepared and the machine connected, we can select the laser type and fine tune settings for the power and speed. For the next test, we're engraving some images onto the black coated aluminium cards. Now for these engravings, the images are inverted to a negative image in the software before sending it to the machine. These are engraved with the fiber laser at a 2K resolution with 20% power and a 3% depth. Each of these images took around 6-7 to seven minutes to complete, and the finished result looks really good, especially on the Batman image with a great contrast and sharp details. Next up we have some blank brass coins, and we're engraving onto the surface using the fibre laser at a 4K resolution, 100% power, and a 25% depth. It took around 6 minutes to complete each side of the coin, and with the engraving finished, the coin needs a bit of a clean up with some polish. Here is a side by side comparison of the coins, straight from the laser on the left side, and the cleaned up one on the right side. So slate coasters are really easy to engrave, and can be engraved with either the diode or fibre laser. For this one we're using the fibre laser with a 2K resolution, 50% power, and a 20% depth. It took about 5 minutes to complete and it gave a good result of the image. Next up we're engraving a text logo onto a 30cm piece of wood. For longer projects like this, we're using the optional slider extension. Once the wood is aligned under the laser, we can check the positioning is correct before starting the job. This is engraved with a 450 diode laser at a 2K resolution, 50% power, and a 20% depth.
The job took about 1 minute and 30 seconds to complete, and the finished result looks good. A nice clean text engraving on the wood. And if you need the text darker or deeper, just increase the power and depth settings. Overall, the LP5 was easy to set up and use, and the modular design allows it to be set up for different engravings, and it produced some great results that I was happy with. Both the slider and the rotary attachments complement the laser and expand the capabilities of the machine. As with most lasers, it does produce a bit of smoke and fumes when in use, and while the fan on the protective cover removes most of it out the back, I'd recommend getting and connecting the air purifier if you're planning on using it indoors. The compact design of the LP5, featuring two different lasers in one device, does a great job at fine engravings across a wide range of materials and projects.